Hi, I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation, and we're here to help you with your marriage on this particular topic, what to do when your husband constantly disappoints you. I'd like to offer you a way of seeing this that is different, very different from how you're seeing it now. And what I talk about will kind of address it, but more importantly, it will address how you see your own marriage and it will allow you to make the kinds of changes that create happiness for you. If your husband is constantly, let me explain it this way. As a human being, we are endowed with certain amazing qualities. We have the ability to reframe virtually anything that we want by using our free will and by using a guide towards personal happiness. We have a consciousness that allows us to be happy. We have free will. Connect the dots. That means you can always be happy, virtually no matter what is going on around you. You see, we are souls essentially. This is not a religious thing. You're a soul and you have a body and you have a mind. So as we are in a body, a, a body that is biological, it means that every cell is driven by a drive to survive. You know about this from school. The survival instinct, they call it, is very strong, but it is originating in the body. Every cell you learned a long time ago is endowed with this drive. It's so powerful. So now you as a soul are in a body and you have a mind, but the body, just like in an animal, is telling the mind on a constant basis, watch out for this, watch out for that. This is an opportunity. This is dangerous. Effectively, our bodies are training our mind. Okay, what does this have to do with your husband disappointing you? I'm getting to that. You have learned to see things based on this drive. So your eyes are looking out in the world and your eyes don't carry anything but raw data. Oh, here comes a car. It's in the road. I'm not stepping in the road, but your mind takes the information and it calculates. Now, depending on the person, it may be right away afraid of the car, even though it's in the road and the person is standing on the sidewalk. Who knows why? Could be some past experience, something they saw in a movie. It doesn't matter. What happens is the mind is filtering all the time. It's filtering information to satisfy not you, the soul, but the drive to survive. Now we're going to go into your husband disappointing you, okay? As a soul, you found your soul mate. This is real. As a soul mate, you chose to love your husband unconditionally so that you could experience that part of you, which is the soul that is constantly living in a blissful state, happiness, joy, whatever you want to call it, marital bliss, you could call it that. That was your design when you got married. Okay, maybe you didn't say it out loud, but I'm explaining to you how it works. So the problem is that instead of living on that level of love, your body is fighting you inside your mind. And the mind has kind of taken charge over you. You're not controlling the mind. You're not telling the mind, oh, don't worry about that. It's not a big thing. Don't worry about this. It doesn't affect my love. 
You already promised to love your husband unconditionally. You gave your word. Forget about that part. Forget the vow. The problem is that of course you want to love your husband. Of course you still love your husband. But you're allowing the drive to survive. You're allowing emotions, likes and dislikes, to affect you and prevent you from experiencing your husband at the highest level of love. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. You know, when I started the Marriage Foundation, it was a long time ago, but before I started the Marriage Foundation, I began helping couples with their marriages. Before that, I was a divorce mediator. So I saw in living color how marriage counseling brought people to me to help them get a divorce. It's over 20 years ago. And I thought, this is not the way it should be. Since then, I came up with my own way, which is based on more realistic things than how Western psychology approaches things. They want to solve every little problem. You can't. We live in a world where there's nothing but little problems, big problems, medium-sized problems. They are not spiritually oriented and you have to be spiritually oriented for your marriage or it won't work because marriage is essentially spiritual. So I came up with a system that you could find in my books but that's not the point of this. The point is that I broke it down to see why we feel the way we feel, why we're impacted and it's not Freudian. You don't go back to what happened when or what your childhood was. All that doesn't matter. What matters is the future. That's what you're able to control. You cannot fix the past. For whatever reason, you felt disappointment by the things that your husband did. And here's where we get into it very, very importantly. What your husband did, call those catalysts, and they hit in your mind triggers brought up by memories, past experiences, what you've learned, and it fashioned what your husband did into something that annoyed you, that disappointed you. Even if it's something like your husband spending too much money, your husband playing too many video games, your husband looking at other women, all of those things you cannot change those things, but you can change how you perceive it. And here's why it makes a difference. Because when you contain your mind into its proper relative position for you as a human being, and you make it your servant, then you don't let it tell you what to do. You don't let it tell you to be disappointed. Instead, you take a look at the information and you keep it here. But what you do is you remember you love your husband. And so your perspective about what he's doing changes. And although there may be a flash of disappointment, you contain that. You control that. You don't let it control you. You don't let it control your marriage because you got married to be happy. You have free will to be happy. You have volition. You have the ability to be happy literally no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens in your marriage. And now, knowing this, you have to open this up and you use this knowledge to recognize that you don't really know even how to be married. And here's where you find one of my books, or if your marriage is really slipping towards divorce, you get the course for women, but you take charge. You have to take charge. Disappointment is saying, I'm not in charge, I'm a victim. That's ridiculous for a human being to ever be a victim. 
We just are not designed to be victims. We're designed to see what's in front of us as our challenge and face it. You know, there's a beautiful prayer. For those of you who believe in God, Lord, I will reason, I will will, and I will act. I will do that. But guide thou my reason, will, and activity to the right thing that I should do. You already have these gifts. You need to use them. And you use them to have in your marriage, which is the greatest vehicle for achieving happiness and love, you use them to achieve those two goals of marriage, those two promises of marriage. So I'm not like mainstream. I know that. I don't tell you to try and talk to your husband to get him to do this because he won't listen. Your husband has free will too. And we learn and we respond from an inner drive, not from someone telling us what to do. So none of that stuff will work anyway. So this, what I'm telling you, will work. You gain control over the mind. You learn to love your husband unconditionally. And you fashion your marriage into that which you got married for, happiness and love. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Blessings to you. Thank you for spending time with me and I hope we spend time again. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Take a look at our website. See what we have to offer. Take care and God bless.